The thing that I think is cool about Wonder Horse is that it feels so much about the tunes and about the feeling and what you've said about Midas and the way it was recorded. Is that, have you, have you had to kind of like to push it down, like all the distractions? Uh, definitely when we were making the record, it was uh, useful to yeah, turn everything off and just kind of disappear into this world. And uh, the uh, geographical location we were in, you know, we were in Minnesota and in somewhere in the middle of nowhere, definitely added to that. What's yeah. Minnesota like? I've never been, paint, what is, like, paint me a picture. Uh, yeah, it's just a, like expansive farmlands, each house is half a mile apart. Yeah. The studio we were in was just um, in the middle of the forest, basically, a little opening in the forest, you know, like beautiful house that we stayed in, then a little walkway down to the studio, just, yeah, our own, Fun. Our own little world, really. Turn yeah. your phone off. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. When you were kids doing that, I grew up in the countryside and like nice. building skate ramps and BMX ramps and yeah. just having fun. And I think so much of my interest now as an adult, I'm trying to get back to them. Yeah. I'm trying to reach that kind of pure, like little kernel of like, oh, what actually makes me excited. Yeah. And I feel like that's a bit of a that's, a, that's a, that's a job in itself. Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, I think that's why we really enjoyed making this, this record as well. We were trying to capture that thing of, or recapture that thing of when you're sort of 15, 16, yeah. playing in your first band in a garage and with all the mistakes and all the sort yeah. of uh, things, you know, keeping everything that went wrong sort of on, on the record, you know, um, which is, like I guess at first you can sometimes cringe kind of listening back to certain bits but they actually sort of become why you love it in the end yeah. no it was definitely an exercise in um, I don't know setting aside any egos or any like um, perfectionism yeah as yeah. far as like our individual playing as musicians goes we had to leave that at the door and just yeah. try and make a good record <laughs> regardless yeah. of all the mistakes and you know yeah, yeah. That's a good feeling. I think a lot of there's something about guitar music, or maybe all music, that when you're a fan, you, there's, you know, the kind of the next step of being a guitar music fan is getting a guitar and learning yeah. how to play a few chords. And there's there's magic about that. And yeah. there's like you know better than anyone, but there's lots of people who know that feeling of that magic you capture in a room, and it is transportational. It's def it's better it's better than anything else in life. Yeah, definitely. I agree. I mean, that's kind of we're trying to keep keep that you know I guess as as you do more and more stuff and you work hard, harder and harder it's uh just just doing things to kind of keep it keep that youthful kind of spirit about it and not make it feel like a well-trodden sort yeah. of thing you know what are your tips Jacob I know you surf yeah. that's quite like a like a visually and when you do it it's like a full body experience I can see how like when yeah. you've got one it's like driving or like riding a bicycle on a busy road, you've got to concentrate because otherwise you're going to hurt yourself. Yeah. Do you get like inspiration from that? Do you get a good feeling from that? Uh, I think the main thing surfing does for me is it actually provides a sort of a space where I'm not thinking about music. It's like the one time where, you know, normally it's kind of you wake up, you go to bed, there's always something musical going on, but surfing seems to get rid of all of that. And it's a sort of a moment of, uh, of a sort of clarity, I guess, yeah. with no sort of professional ambition in there either it's just something yeah. to do for fun that's a good point there's something as you get as you become an adult you're like okay everything needs to go towards being a professional yeah i sometimes think there's no better reason to do anything than no reason yeah yeah usually that uh can like bring forth the best fruit you know yeah especially yeah. what's that for any, anything for its own sake yeah without yeah for real i mean we'll nothing see. about getting older is that shit goes wrong Midas is the name of the record. Yeah, yeah. You got the Midas touch? Uh, we shall see. <laughs> yeah. I think like a couple of people have been like, oh, did you call the record that? Because you think it's going like, well, <laughs> no, it's kind of different reasons, but. <laughs> that would be like, so that'd be a good, like, you're backing yourself. That's like comedy arrogance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess, yeah, we'll just see where the record goes, huh? Yeah, I mean, it's not what we had in mind when, when naming it that, but um, yeah, we'll, see, we'll have to see. And he wrote mm. it all together, didn't you? It's like a, it's a pretty like group group writing yeah. process. It was different from the first record. I mean, Jacob's the prime songwriter, but I think the difference maybe with this was just uh, a lot of the stuff was written in the studio. Mm. So we were, as a group, were immediately there and we'd, we'd built up a good, good rapport from doing, I don't know how many shows, 200 plus shows together leading up to it. So it was kind of, the stage was set for us to all do our bit on it and yeah. And yeah. Have you got a place that you go to when you're trying to write? Are there books or like certain directors or like TV shows that you know, you know you can, you're gonna bring something back from? 
I think uh, it can really come from anywhere. And I think if you go looking for it, you're not going to find it. It kind of has to find you, weirdly. And uh, it kind of has to take you by surprise. You get it from like people or places or, yeah, other other works of art, you know, music and literature or whatever. But um, it usually catches you off guard. You know, if you look at it, it disappears. It's one of those weird things. Uh, so I, that's what I find anyway. I guess everyone's different, you know. There's Johnny Flynn once wrote about when he was writing that first full length, A Larum. 2010 or so he was in a period of his life you know he wasn't doing much in the daytime necessarily and so would get on the central line when it was actually going round and round and round yeah. and just kind of write notes just watch people maybe probably look like a bit of a weirdo but you know you're writing notes about people's actions and the feelings you're getting and yeah i think there's so much you can you can forget about the little things that actually become the most meaningful yeah we got to try that and get you on the central line yeah yeah you'd be whizzing around there yeah <laughs> Hey, thanks for chatting. Thank you. Thanks for chatting. 101 part time jobs. Have you ever been fired from a job? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Every job except this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, have you lied on your CV? Uh, yeah, there wasn't much on it, but I think most of what was on it was not true. Yeah, I've, I've, I'm sure I have. You're going to have to, to get your foot in the door. You know? not, yeah, when there's nothing on it, you got to. I feel, especially in our age, our generation, like everyone's got the same qualifications. So, how do you mm. stand out? Yeah, I don't. I haven't got many. I left school at like 16, and uh, yeah, which made uh, getting a job even more difficult. So I'm glad I'm doing this. Yeah. yeah. Record comes out pretty soon. Yes. Yeah. You got a couple of shows coming up. Uh, yeah, a few shows. Yeah, we got well, obviously this in Leeds, and then we're doing a few installs in Leeds on Monday, and I think next week we're gonna go. We've got like a. A London in-store, Brighton one, things like that. Just How do you find anything. those acoustic shows? Or are they, are they full band in-stores? That'd be full band. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're a live band. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, we'll do, I'm sure we'll do a few acoustic things in the future. Yeah. But We're at Reading. What are your earliest Reading memories? I came here when I was like 15, 16. I think it's a lot of people do. And um, yeah, I, I didn't come with a tent. I just came with the clothes. I was in, it was kind of a last minute thing. And um, so I, I, I had a great time, met a lot of people. <laughs> People were very uh, hospitable and um, yeah. yeah, I don't know if I'd do it that way now, but uh, I had a great time, yeah. Sounds like you had to meet a few people, you got to find a tent to stay Yeah, in. yeah, I knew a few people who were there, but finding them was, was hard enough, you know. Hey, thanks for chatting. Thank you. you. If you enjoyed this chat, make sure you subscribe to 101 Part-Time Jobs for more. We've done episodes with Idols, Yard Act, Self-Esteem, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, and so many more. We put out two episodes every week, and we'd love to have you there. Subscribe to 101 Part-Time Jobs on Spotify, Apple, and everywhere you get your podcasts.